For my first review of 2021, I'm going to review... Oh god, how do I even pronounce this? Rose... Ro Rosen... Um... Rosen... Alright, we're gonna try it. Rosen Cruz Delette? I'm gonna refrain from trying to enunciate it for the remainder of this review due to the risk of further embarrassing myself by horribly mispronouncing it. I fail enough at trying to speak English in normal situations. Before I get onto the game itself, I want to give a shout out to, and I apologize if I also mispronounce this, Somloy Galuska Entertainment, who told me about this game during one of my Chaos Legion streams. Thanks a bunch, I really enjoyed this one. Now that that's out of the way, back to the game. RKS, oh that'll work. It's a game where you'll play as a girl named Spiritia, or Tia for short, who is running through some training grounds to find another girl named Iris. She is abducted by a dragon and is told by someone else that the Holy Blades of the Rose Cross that she is a part of is now rebelling against the Empire, since long ago there was a war that dictated that all magic users are allowed to coexist as normal humans, but only as servants of the Empire. Since Tia isn't keen on the idea of rebelling, she sets out to find out the truth of why, and to stop the Count that's in charge of the Uprising. To call RKS a Mega Man inspired game wouldn't quite explain it properly. Calling it a Dureth clone would be closer to the truth. Everything from the initial 8 choosable stages, from the bosses giving you powers after defeat, to the subtle nods to the source material, just screams Mega Man. So if you've ever played any of the 6 games on the original NES, you'll know what you're in for. Possibly the biggest issue with RKS is the difficulty. Unlike the Mega Man games, for the most part, here, it's incredibly uneven. Most stages are fairly easy to complete, lasting anywhere from 3 to 5 minutes, which is good because, chances are, you'll be replaying them often. The bosses will destroy you if you're not using their weaknesses. Sure, you can try using the regular pea shooter, but you'll find one, maybe two bosses, where this is an accepted weapon for the battle. Go up against one of the others though, and you'll find your carcass thrown a mile down the road. The enemy bosses often strike you for a third of your life bar, so only a few hits and you'll be destroyed. Thankfully, the same is mostly true when using the weaknesses against your foes. Just like in true Mega Man fashion, when you defeat one of the bosses, you'll earn their weapon for your own use. Of course, these weapons have a limited power bar, which can be refilled by finding icons not unlike the ones found in Mega Man. One thing that is interesting about RKS is the fact that once you take out about half of the enemy's life bar, they'll gain a new attack that seems almost like a desperation strike. If you don't hurry up and kill the boss quickly, they'll defeat you usually within seconds. The boss battles are over quickly, and if you're not paying attention, you'll be seeing the game over screen before you know it. This is neat too, since each stage has its own game over screen, and each has some sort of nod to a past game of the era. I like these small touches. The gameplay itself is fairly solid though, which is good since you'll need to be relying on your fast reflexes to survive each stage. I used my typical Xbox One controller, and it felt natural as I was playing the game. Of course, there were some times where I want the chuck said controller to do some cheap deaths at some points of the game, such as the quick man like instant kill beams that need to be memorized very quickly, or some questionable placements of spikes. For example, this section here? How was I supposed to know I was supposed to slide to the right? Oh well. You might think that if you truly get that frustrated with the game, that you'll go ahead and save to quit. But not exactly. This game features no save system other than a replay of your game in case you wanted to watch it to learn some new strategies, but otherwise, there are absolutely no saves. Instead, you get the classic Mega Man password grid where you need to place spheres in a specific order to continue your game. Of course, when you do this, you don't retain any extra lives for the game's version of E-Tanks, so later stages may be a bit challenging. Going against death itself without E-Tanks? No thanks. So I ended up spending half a day off to play through the game in one sitting, which amounted to about three and a half hours of playtime. At least the game does give you another password when going from the one Final Fortress to the actual Final Fortress. If that makes any sense. One thing I will say is that when you do actually get to the final bosses, they are in my opinion the easiest battles of the game. Putting up with the challenge level of the rest of the game, I wasn't expecting such a pushover for the final boss. I'm not going to show it to you as the story of the game is actually kind of interesting, and you may not have seen the villain coming. I will say that I would be surprised if there wasn't an anime style from this game, as it seems like a perfect material for it. The only thing left for me to talk about is the music. 
It's fantastic, and has that new age retro feel many indie retro games are going for nowadays. I found a few of them getting in my head as I took a break here and there, so that's always a plus. Ro oh, here we go again. Ro 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 Rosencruz Stilette is a really good game that can be hard as nails at times. I bought it on a recent Steam sale for 6 bucks, since it was bundled with its sequel, which I heard is even better, but I haven't personally tried it out yet. Maybe a stream opportunity? We'll see. But until then, if you are even remotely a fan of Mega Man, RKS could be right up your alley. It might be a Mega Man clone, but at least it does it right. Final score? 5 out of 7. This Reaper. Happy fragging.